Hello, my name is Abigail Hooper, and I will be teaching you about the Pony Express in Utah. Imagine riding for miles and miles across very rocky and rough terrain, while having to deal with many dangers along the way, including pirate attacks and many other threats. If you were able to do this, you were able to picture what it was like to ride in the Pony Express. Before the Pony Express, mail was very slow, sometimes taking up to eight weeks to send a letter. The main way to send a letter was the stagecoach business, and if there was water in the way, then a steamboat would carry it across the river or body of water. So, William H. Russell, a religious man who believed that anything could happen with enough faith and hard work, started planning. At this time, the West was not informed of what was happening in the rest of the country. Russell believed that there was a way to fix that problem with sending faster mail. He thought that young men riding on horses over the rugged terrain for hours on end ought to do the trick. Russell had earned a fortune in the stagecoach business and wanted to earn another with launching this new idea. His end goal was to get a government contract. So he began his planning. Russell started by mapping a trail from St. Joseph, Missouri to Sacramento, California. Russell teamed up with Alexander Majors and William Waddle to help with the task up ahead. They started advertising with a poster that read, Wanted, young, skinny, wiry fellows, not over 18, must be expert riders willing to risk life daily, orphans preferred, wages $25 per week, apply Pony Express Stables to St. Joseph, Missouri. Many people responded to the ad and applied. In all, they hired 120 riders. Next, they would need horses. And these horses had to be able to ride at very high speeds over very rough terrain. Many of the horses were found near Kimball's Junction and on Antelope Island. Then they made the stations, positioning them about 10 to 15 miles apart, depending on how rough the terrain was. Finally, after two months of preparation, the first ride of of the Pony Express was in session on April 3rd, 1860. Johnny Fry was the first person to saddle up and ride over the 2,000 mile terrain, completing the run and arriving in Sacramento, California on April 13th, 1860. Everyone was surprised that they were able to do it in 10 and a half days. The route was long and tedious with various dangers, such as dehydration, heat exhaustion, frostbite, blizzards, Indian attacks, and many others that came packaged in with the rest. When a rider reached a stable, he would unsaddle his horse and saddle up a fresh horse in less than two minutes. Once riders reached a home station, they would hand the duty off to someone else. Most stations were small log cabins that were crude, very crudely furnished with empty crates to sit on. Each station had a small corral to keep horses in, and, a st and each station was run by a station master who had to know how to cook, how to be a carpenter, doctor, horse trainer, blacksmith, and substitute rider when needed. The home stations, on the other hand, were furnished much better with extra sleeping quarters and room for horses. It also had a blacksmith workshop and other necessities. The diet of the riders was cured meats, dried fruit, bread, molasses, pickles, coffee, and cornmeal, which was a very small diet because of all the energy needed to ride for so long on such hard terrain. Uniforms for the riders were bright red shirts and blue pants, so they could easily seen, be seen from far off. Another way to alert the station master was to blow the bugle given to you. You were also given a Colt revolver to defend yourself if absolutely necessary. The Pony Express was halted five weeks in because of pirate attacks, but then started again soon after. The Pony Express continued for 18 months after it started. It was terminated on October 26, 1861, because the telegraph was a much more efficient way to send messages, because it took minutes instead of days. When the Pony Express was ended, it was in debt for $200,000. The Pony Express was a great improvement in today's mail, and added a unique part in Utah history. It shows the spirit of the people in our, of our state, and we display it proudly. <laughs>